What's up, guys? Josh Law here with the the boys, the guys. I got with me today Ed Knight, Nathan Crawford, and Sebastian Cavallo. Uh, we only needed two people to break down the Warriors set, but we needed three for Guardians, and uh, we need four for Brutes, I guess. Uh, we got uh, Seb and Ed, who have been playing quite a bit of uh, Brute. We got Nathan, who's been analyzing Brute. And um, I'm going to be playing kind of the host here, because I don't know very much about this. I'm going to be asking the questions to these guys, basically. Um, Seb, you're, this is your first uh, set review with us. Uh, why don't you kick us off with uh, your thoughts on uh, the heavy hitters cards for Brute in general? I mean, I think the heavy hitters cards like made Brute from why are you playing this over a different like you know a different class to it kind of like finally feels like it has its uh, own identity and enough power cards other than Blood Rush Bellow and a couple different ways to build where you can get consistency where there's actually a reason to play this over something like Guardian or Warrior you know because the whole thing of like or you know just even Ninja because the whole thing is hitting hard but you're not as efficient as some other decks but I feel like now with the tools that they gave them the set that you really are. And there's a reason to play Brute over, you know, something like in the past would have been like Bravo. Okay. Or if you're playing an aggro style, like, you know, Ninja, mm -hmm. if you're just going for um, damage without caring about hit effects. Sure. Uh, okay. Let's, you, you mentioned the, the Brutes in general. So let's, let's take a look at uh, the Brutes of Wraith. Uh, so the guy on the left is an OG, but that is brand new art. Uh, I know Nathan is particularly fond of this. It's quite nice. Uh, so it's Reinhardt Reckless Rampage. You know him from WTR. His hero ability, whenever you discard a card with six or more power during your action phase, Intimidate, which is choose a card at random from your opponent's hand, banish it, they get it back at the end of the turn. So this uh, gives him pseudo evasion. This also turns on things like uh, barraging beat down, uh, things like pulping. It makes it easier. Um, and uh, yeah, he's he's the he's the OG. He in general, something that we're going to see as a theme throughout the brutes is that they don't really have uh, on hit effects, but they do have some above rate damage and. Um, I'd say Reinhardt's damage is the least above rate, but uh, he has access to evasion. Mm -hmm. Next, we got Leviah, Shadowborn, Ab Ab not Apostle, Shadowborn Abomination. This is the hero from Monarch, Shadow Brute, and it says, if a card with six or more power has been put into your banish on this turn, cards you lose, cards you own lose blood debt during their end phase. Uh, this hero was. Very, very in a very, very rough spot for a very, very long time until Dust Till Dawn uh, printed some good Shadow Brute cards, particularly the the transformation card. Um, and we've seen that Levia has a better rate than Reinhar, but needs a little bit of time to set up the graveyard, and uh, you know can be susceptible to dying to blood debt. Um, overall. Prior to this set, we've seen Leviah have a little bit more success than Reinhardt, especially recently. Um, and then we have Ko, who is the newest uh, brute. Uh, Ko, armed and dangerous. This is a, a a brute hero that says you have one weapon zone, so you can have a one-handed weapon or offhand equipped to that uh, equipment zone. And it says attack action cards you own get plus one while they are in any zone other than the combat chain. So this allows him to run blue five power cards uh unlike reinhar and leviah he also has the first time you discard a card with six or more power during each of your action phases create a might token so might token breaks at the beginning of turn gives plus one power this is very reminiscent of ira crimson haze the blitz hero the intro hero uh that gave plus one power to her second attack each turn um for those of you who paid attention to blitz over the last few years you would know that Ira was considered top, top, top tier in the Crucible of War Monarch days. But then we had that period where Monarch Tales of Aria came out and the game kind of power crept. The traditionally fair heroes in Blitz like Ira and Dorinthia out of the metagame. They were 
just not quite good enough to compete. Uh, but now that we've seen, you know, Fab 2.0 implemented a bit, we're kind of going back to more fair flesh and blood. Um, Ira's hero ability is still relevant, so now KO kind of taking that spot. Um, do you guys have any uh, thoughts on the Brutes of Wraith in general? Where they? Um, I'm just happy been... they did KO. <laughs> For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a weird dichotomy where I think uh, Levi and Kay are trying to compete uh, for the exact same thing. I think they're basically trying to say, I'm the best aggressive brute, uh, or even mid-range in that matter. Um, and I think a player looking at those two heroes is going to be like, do I want to deal with the whole blood debt dynamic or not? And that'll that can be a very quick decision on which hero you prefer to play. I think because the other two are doing so well, I think there's zero reason to play Reinar in any aggressive manner. I think you have to lean more mid-rangey, just wait for Blood Rush Bellow to happen, and then just keep that slower mid-range game plan, not the more aggressive mid-range game plan. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why we haven't seen Recursion Leviah be really... It had its flash in the pan uh, in Dust Till Dawn, but Recursion Leviah, you it's kind of like you rather just play Reinhardt uh, yep. as, as a mid-range right. deck. So Leviah's kind of in this weird spot where like KO can be a bit more aggressive and Reinhardt can be a bit more controlling. So it's like you, you have to really want the shadow and the, what the shadow brute cards are doing uh, yeah. to really pick Leviah here. Okay. Uh let us talk about some equipment. As st- let's start with weapons, uh, as we did with the previous set reviews. So we have two new weapons here. Uh, joining Mandible Claw, of course, uh, for one-handed weapons. We have Ball Breaker. This is a brute one-handed flail that attacks for three. Has once per turn, two resources attack. And it says if you've discarded a card with six or more power this turn, this gets plus one. So this can be four power pretty consistently in uh, KO uh, because traditionally his deck runs like 50 to 55-ish six power cards or five power, which becomes six power cards. Um, And then the other weapon that we have is Mini Meat Axe, three power brute weapon axe, one-handed, pay two to attack. When this attacks, draw a card and then discard a random card. Uh, so discarding a random card helps with Intimidate, helps with uh, KO's Might generation. Um, so let's talk about these in context of uh, Reinhardt first. So Reinhardt can run Romping Club if they want, if he wants to play more mid range. Can play Mandible Claws if he wants to be more, you know, aggressive and bursty. Uh, is there a reason for Reinhardt to run either of these weapons to replace a Mandible Claw or mi- perhaps even two? Yeah, I don't, so. I don't think so. No, I, I mean, if you think about the game plan, right? You're waiting for Blood Rush Bellow. What is the most consistent thing you can do with Blood Rush Bellow? Claw, claw, attack, right? If you have either one of these weapons, that staple line is you no longer have access to. Right. You you have you to roll scab skins to get which adds a whole other layer. <laughs> nope. of, yeah. You don't want you don't want to take a lot of risk when you're mm-hmm. on a slow mid range game plan. You need to do the mm-hmm. thing you're trying to do. Okay. Okay, uh, same thing for Levi, I presume neither of these make the yep. cut for her. Okay, yep. so yep. so let's talk about it in context of KO. So KO has access to a single Mandible Claw, a single Ball Breaker, or a single Mini Meat Axe. Uh, refresher for those of you who don't know what Mandible Claw does, it's three power. Uh, if you've discarded a six power card this turn, it gains go again. Costs two to attack. So all of these weapons cost two to attack. They all come in for three. But Ballbreaker can come in for four. And Mini Meat yeah. Axe effectively comes in for four in KO because you get a Might Token for next turn. Yep. yep. So do we Personally, value I'm the go again? Ball or... a lot. Yep. You, you prefer the consistency of Ballbreaker? Yeah, I feel like um, on your Blood Rush turns, you might be losing two damage sometimes, but. With the amount of agilities you create, the amount of go again that KO has naturally in the deck, 
um, or the way you can build them to have a lot of Gogan in the deck. Your Blood Rush turns seem pretty consistent, and but the value you get from the plus one on your like you know set up your turns and the turns in between is just it's just really good value. You know most of your you know turns you're coming in for ten damage base without any might tokens or any additional you know um and that's like you know two card hand tens because the whole drawing and discard off the top so i'm really liking ball breaker and ko okay uh any more thoughts on the weapons i mean playing wild rod off of a blue that's a two card hand at six damage discard a, a six that's plus one from ko that's seven Tunic counter to ball breaker is a two right. card, eleven. Yeah, like Root has who, very high who damage. Who cares? A, a big number. Yeah, who cares? Who who cares about wounded bull? This is this is like <laughs> the new wounded bull. I'm just saying, like two card eleven with a tunic. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, you yeah. Could all, you could only get nine value with a hard offender wounded bull, right? So right. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so ball breaker, kind of the consensus on the card guys team to. Uh, as the weapon of choice for KO. All right, let's talk about equipment. So normally we gloss over the card on the right in these uh, set reviews. However, this one is a little bit different because it is in the chest position. So yep. uh, currently Brute does not have access to a two block, one block in the chest position. You're either running heart and cross straps, tunic, or uh, bark bone strapping. So... Um, now, I'm not saying the card on the right, Raw Meat, is the greatest card in the world. I'm saying that there's, it is not strictly worse, like the Brayforge Bracers and Iron Sock versus example from the Warrior right. set. Um, mm. So Raw Meat says, uh, as a brute equipment chess piece with zero block value and temper, if you control an agility, this gets plus one. If you control a might, this gets plus one. So uh, is there any reason for any of the brutes to be running this over... Tunic, heart and cross strap, or bark bone strapping. Likely not. Um, yeah, no. It's pretty consistent in KO, I would say, just because you're making the might off his hero ability. And you will have ways to create agility tokens because uh, those are some of the best cards that we're going to find out, um, some of the creators for that. But again, we just made the example of, you know, two cost go again attack into two cost weapon swing. Well, the way you do that off of two card hands to maximize efficiency over turn cycles is with a tunic, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you would play this over a tunic. And no. then, you know, for Reinar, he's playing mid range. So you want tunic because likely the best strategy and the most successful strategy in the recent past is the ones that play pummel. So tunic pummel on, you know, some three card hands, something like command and conquer and so on. And then, no, Leviah is going to play this over Carrion Husk, right? right? So, what? like, come on, come yeah. on. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, so let's let's uh, talk about the card on the left then, since this is much more relevant. Um, so, this is Apex Bonebreaker, a brute arms equipment that has two block value and temper. When this defends together with a card with six or more power, create a might token. So, now the brutes have quite a fridge now. Scab skins, yeah, plus. Uh, scowling flesh bag and the headpiece. So and plus this. Uh, so this is over the course of the game. This is going to very reliably create two might tokens and give you three life. So this is this arm piece is worth five value. Uh, competing with what is this competing with? Uh, this is competing with uh, gambler's gloves. Gambler's gloves and the other one that gives plus one when you roll a five or six. Skull crush. No, it's not competing with that. <laughs> well, I'm I saying will. that in those the are the past, options those are the in the arm slot. <laughs> right. So uh, but it's between this and gamblers and then for Leviah, it's like the grass with darkness. Right. Like those are the, the only playable ones for the most part, unless you guys disagree. Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean this is a strict upgrade from Grasp of Darkness, so I think that now it is just completely unless you're unless racing you the expect a lot of wizards or something <laughs> right. along those lines, yeah. right? Like if we get another wizard, then Grass might have a place in a right. sideboard. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is just this is this reminds me of uh, the Rune Blade Carapace. It's just value stapled right. to value, <laughs> yeah. um, and 
this is actually creating a situation where if you want to have uh you you could have six seven block very 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 easily um which is very very solid uh with one card plus your armor suite that protects you against you know dominated crippling crush and uh it'll basically shut down a azalea arrow as well that's dominated so um strong card it's not the flashiest card but it uh yeah it's what is it's, the likelihood that labaya plays this over gambler's gloves because i feel like you really need the gambler's yep. gloves to be able to enable that strategy yeah. right yep so 100%. Separately, though, I think the other brutes could use this very well, especially KO, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just because, I mean, you're very consistent. And then I kind of go back and forth, like, evaluating this with Reinar. It's like, do you run Gambler's Loves? Do you run this? I, I could see an argument for both, mm -hmm. right? But I, either way, it's a very good card. It's, it's a good side grade, as we've been kind of deeming it, right? Some of these other cards and the other reviews. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. I think it just boils down to how often do you roll shabbies? If the answer is a lot, right. or As in Leviathan's. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so Leviathan's situation is a little different because if you miss on your roll, you die. And that's mm -hmm. why Gamblers is better. It's not necessarily that you're rolling more, it's just the risk of rolling is much, much higher in Leviathan right. than it is in the other. Okay. Uh, Apex Bonebreaker, great card. Raw meat. Not so great. All right, moving on. Yep. Let's talk about the specializations. So the first specializations are for KO. Uh, the card on the left is Knucklehead, a brute head equipment with two block and temper. That's pretty strong. Very similar to Olympia's headpiece. Uh, it has action, destroy this, roll a six-sided die. Until end of turn, your base intellect is the number rolled. So for... Just to be clear, the average value of a D6 is 3.5. So on average, you're going to lose half an intellect activating this. <laughs> uh, this is basically for a limited uh, scowling flesh bag is so strong and yeah. gets a major power bump in the hands of a skilled user, very similar to stalagmite. Um, if you use scowling flashback at the right time it's going to block for way more than two okay. so uh i don't really see this being used uh so you're especially like considering you you're not running you're not running a uh, gambler's gloves with this so listen yeah. blitz ko ready to roll crack knucklehead you got six intellect for your next turn kill him one turn <laughs> yeah. actually two turn otk oh, cycle like you're dead come on come on Okay. But this I, is for I CC anyway. I could, I, maybe in Blitz. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, yeah, it's yeah. limited. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the other specialization. Reckless Charge. This is a zero-cost blue pitch. Only comes in blue because it's a majestic. Uh, brute Action that defends for three. It says roll a six-sided die. Gain action points equal to half the number rolled. Rounded down. So basically scab skins. If you've rolled a six on a die this turn, draw a card. So, the main way to roll dice is with scab skins, bark bone strapping, ready to roll this headpiece if you wanted to do that. Um, mm. So, mm. if you wanted. <laughs> so, look, if you play this card in CC, you're losing your other arm. This is the reason he lost his first arm, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. I think it's a powerful the, effect, the, though. I'm not the, the main it reason completely. why. So normally you'd be like, "Hey, a blue block three non-attack action." Okay, how bad could it be? Well, in a deck that like the bar for non-attack actions is Blood Rush Bellow and Berserk is like, yeah, right. this just doesn't cut it, right? So this hurts your consistency of your deck. Um, yeah, I don't even understand the card, like. <laughs> You if it said have... draw two cards, okay, maybe yeah, I'll something it. Like, like that. I get it, I get it. You're right. Trying to high roll the crap out of somebody, but like, yeah, everybody's like, oh, but if it's like skull crushers, but you draw a card, but like, yes, you're using a card, you use the effect of a piece of equipment you already have that has battle worn. 
So the card is not a gain. It's you're getting your card back and there's a lot of risk associated with it. Like I mm-hmm. it it just doesn't make sense to me. The only situation it makes sense is like it doesn't. Yeah, it just doesn't. There is okay. specializations <laughs> or blitz cards. Yeah. That that's all it is. Yeah, it has to be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Moving on then. Uh we have runner specializations. So this joins sand sketched plan as well as alpha rampage so we have monstrous veil they had equipment with one block and battle warrant it says destroy this draw a card and then discard a random card go again um so it's kind of like skull horns, <laughs> but the the reason that you would run skull horn is to do it on turn zero, and then this has a block value, so you want to get the value of the block first. So yeah, it's, it, it, this card just doesn't make sense. It's for limited, basically. Only thing going forward is it looks like scaling flesh bag, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> you put it off by flipping it over, and they're like yeah, that's a scaling. Yeah, you flip it yeah, over, and then you block and... with it, and they're like, wait, hold on. You did that on turn one? That's crazy. Yeah. All right. The other card, this one's significantly better. This is Show No Mercy, three cost, red pitch, brute attack action. Attacks for six, defense for three. It says, when this attacks a hero, intimidate them. If the defending hero has no cards in hand, this gets plus three. So this is a very, very, very beautiful design, actually. Um, Yeah. Combines well with Barraging Beatdown. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it is very, very easy. So uh, let's, if you go barraging beat down into this, what happens? They l- have two cards at hand. If they block with those two cards, well, this gets plus three. If they don't block with those two mm-hmm. cards, then mm-hmm. it gets plus four. So, yep. uh, it's pretty hot. This card says take damage yeah. at a certain you know part of the game, which is awesome. Yeah. Now, you're not going to get the plus three and the plus four, unfortunately, but... Unless they're very silly and block with one card. And they have no well, cards at hand. If you triple intimidate <laughs> yeah. with this card... Yeah, triple intimidate. It, that's the best, yeah. You you take it all. like Because mm-hmm. even if they block, they, they only get value if it's a D-react. So. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's not hard to actually stack together if you just like... No. You know, two barraging beatdowns, a blue and this. That's all you need. Right. It's an easier to play like alpha rampage combo style thing right? Yep. right you just get more copies of that because the alpha rampage for you to like combo them is you, you need like a five card hand you arsenal the alpha rampage you go double barraging into pitch the blue play the alpha discard the six now the quad intimidated you deal you know at best it's eight plus nine so 17 mm-hmm. right with this card you only need what four cards to be able to like get really good value out of it so yep. you can just like have it off of a a pitch stack draw. You don't have to like set up two turn cycles, right? Yeah, any card that says or does not say as an additional cost discard a card uh is yeah. generally better uh in Reiner. Especially considering it was to play more min rangey. Right. Okay, pretty strong card. Uh probably makes the deck list for most Reinhardt lists. Okay. Let's talk about the three majestic specializations for Brute. So they're every class got five. Two of them are specializations. Three of them apply to all of them. So we're going to talk about these three cards in the context of Reinhardt, Leviah, and Kao. The first one is Send Packing, a three-cost yellow pitch Brute attack action that attacks for six, defends for three. And it says, when this attacks a hero, banish a card from their arsenal. When the chain link resolves, if this did not hit, return the banished card to their hand. So, a um, couple of nuances here. It does not go back to the arsenal. So there are some cards that do gain benefits when played from arsenal, such as Frontline Scout, Plunder Run, uh, Promise of Plenty, etc. Right? So... So that's relevant there. Um, one in 
of a hundred games. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this this is a gives brute some more disruption against uh, decks that really want to keep their whole hand, right? Um, the best thing you... the card does is against Azalea. Yeah, absolutely. Banish she doesn't a have a card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she doesn't have the card in Arsenal, even if she blocks it. So she can't. It she can dominate an arrow. It's just much more difficult to do so afterwards. Yep. So you're just re- you're you're nullifying her um, cross traps. Basically, is all mm-hmm. you're doing. Yep. I mean, I think this is also great. Kind of like what Nathan was saying with the mid rangey Reinar strategy. You know, this is like playing directly into that a two card hand. It's a six power, and it's um it's you know an actually good hit effect. Uh, good hit effect and then it has the additional effect to where if they have a sink below an arsenal they're not getting to use it that turn mm-hmm. and then you also know about it so are we are we um playing this card with extra evasion or extra reacts or are we just playing this raw i think yeah, it's good either way anyway. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's a card like a sideboard card that you bring in. It's just a yellow C and C. Like right. Okay. Uh is this playable in Leviah? All of them. Okay. Three of it in all of them? Okay. Interesting. Probably. Probably. Okay. All right. Okay, let's uh let's move on then to cast bones. This is a zero cost red pitch brute action that defends for three. It says, reveal the top six cards of your deck. Create a might token for each card with six or more power revealed this way. Put the revealed cards on the top of your deck in a random order. If you control six or more might tokens, create an agility token. So, uh, much better in KO than in Reinhar. Um, Levi, yeah. how, how many attack actions is Levi running with six power? Like 40? Similar no, to Reinhardt. I about. think this is. Let me yeah. tell you. About. Okay. Give me a minute. Like this wait. might just be too risky to play in Leviathan, just because it doesn't have yeah, Gogan on itself. Mm-hmm. Um, play in but in KO, it's an absolute all star. In my, you know, yeah. been playing around with KO, and this is a card like Blood Rush Bellow that I wanted to build around because the potential of it. If you're building your KO deck with, you know, a five to six misses for this card in your deck, it's just. I mean, you hit five and six more often than not, and a zero for five that sandbags into the next turn. So against these defensive strategies, because right now everyone's trying to fatigue everyone with Victor. So, you know, being able to carry a, you know, six damage and a um, quicken or agility token to the next turn to start with a, you know, I mean, I've seen swing bigs for uh, 14 damage go again. And that's just to start the turn off. It's like, no matter how high your defense value is, your average defense value, it's hard to start the turn off of that and not take damage to that turn and leak. So, especially in KO with, mm-hmm. sometimes you have those awkward turns where you're like, wild ride, your tunic counter's not up, kind of like what we were talking about. You have that go again. You just slam this out of arsenal, set up for the next turn, you presented a little bit of damage, and you did something with your action point that carries over into the next turn. So, this card has just been off. Let's say you don't have a tunic counter ready to go, Mm -hmm. right? You wild ride, and you end up drawing this card or something along those lines, or you had it in Arsenal, right? You set up. This is a very good follow up. Oh, yeah. Just go wild ride Mm -hmm. six, see what they do, see how they block, play a cast bones. If you get all six, great. That's awesome, right? If you don't, still, it's like usually a zero for four, zero for five. And yeah, you're not getting the value off the weapon, you're just pushing it to the next turn. So this card is like super good in KO, I think. Um, I don't see the other brutes playing it at all, though. Yeah, the, the best line. The best line with this card is I was doing a testing game against Guardian, and I was doing the whole two card hand with the wild ride and the the ball breaker and everything. And I had this card in Arsenal, and they blocked with civic steps on the Ooh. wild ride, and they gave me that, that quick and token. So I swung ball breaker. It had go again. I slapped that out of Arsenal, and they never did that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Very nice. It's too good. Too good. It's a solid card. Yep. Getting five, six 
seven value depending on how you evaluate an agility token it's right off a single card exactly. is very very good and it blocks three <laughs> yeah. and it blocks right. three yeah yeah it's better than uh i don't want to say it's better than codex but uh it it is better blocking value than codex i think it's better than tear limb from limb i'll say that much because yeah. it oh, blocks three yeah. maybe in kano or uh ko i said kano golly mm -hmm. all right next up we got a card that has pretty cool art this is uh no fear zero cost red pitch brute instant as an additional cost to play this, banish any number of cards with six or more power from your hand. At the beginning of your end phase, return them to your hand. The next time you'd be dealt damage this turn, prevent X of that damage where X is two plus the number of cards banished this way. So if this is in Arsenal and you play this, this could prevent six damage six. Uh, with a this single is... card. This is just like KO sideboard for Kano, like only, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like, no. yeah. No, no, no. This is very relevant in many matchups, I think. Anybody that attacks in six or higher, I'm running this in Kano. In KO. The, only, the only thing that is a little bit of a risk is that you basically empty your whole hand. So now if they have a, if they have go again and an on hit effect, you're really open to damage. Right, but most people that attack so, in six power increments yeah. don't have that ability. Like the very, very specific case, this is extremely risky against Dorinthia. <laughs> because if they have Of course, of course. If they because you're basically emptying your whole hand to, to right. do this. Um is, is For there me, a, I would is there a point to empty just a single card? Let's say worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, this is in your hand and you empty one, that will block for three. If you empty two blocks for four, leaving mm -hmm. you with one card left. Right. I do two all the time because I'll do my blue and my wild ride or bear fangs or whatever card I'm trying to play. Mm -hmm. Put that, that to the side because guess what? Secrets out. They don't block anyway. And mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is it converts cards that don't have a block value ah, yeah. to a block value. Mm -hmm. And it does okay. give you that ability. Mm -hmm. um, I can but see that like, argument. This card right. against Azalea yep. is actually insane because you can just stack so high with your armor in this card that and keep your whole hand uh, and really sure. like push the damage. Uh, but those are like the two, ma like Kano, Azalea, right. are like the two main ones that you'd run it in. Guardians yeah, good. other than that, I would think that you would rather just have the three block value that you have in your card. Sure, you got your no blocks. You have a few, mm -hmm. right? You just you have a few, but the majority of your deck is going to block three, is what right. I'm saying. So I think just having them be block threes is likely just better than the no fear, unless you're trying to race or you're playing against something like Kano or Azalea, right? You see where I'm coming from? Well, Kano, you're never blocking your entire hand, right? Like, Right. That's very unless it's just a bad hand, right? And that's the only time that this card's bad because you would want to block with the hand and not keep it. But in that situation, you just arsenal it, right? Sure. Uh, if that sure. if that situation does ever come up. Um, but this allows you to get high value on the defense that d doesn't mess you up with CNC blocking with D reacts, all that stuff. And it just allows you to have a high value aspect. It, it's really about the value, right? Because if you can convert a card to four, five, six on defense, and then still have all your cards on offense, that means your total hand value is likely 15, 16, 17, basically. Um, sure. I, sure. I, think, I think the main thing is that this could convert to a one card five. Right, pretty right. easily. Right. Okay, at like right. at at worst, right? It just it mm -hmm. just the only downside is that okay, I'm only blocking five this whole turn. Whatever okay. else you're gonna do to me, you're gonna do to right. me, right? Right. So, uh, this is one of the more interesting cards yeah. in the set. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think we'll we'll see how this uh, card progresses over time. Uh, but, but definitely only in KO. Only in KO. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for right. sure. Okay. Uh, let's move on now. 
So we got three rares. Um, the card in the middle, Pack Call, was printed in yellow. Uh, I believe in the Reinhardt versus Dorinthia uh, mm-hmm. set. So now they've completed that cycle. So now there's a red and a blue Pack Call. Uh, but let's start off with Beast Mode first. This is a three-cost red, uh, yellow, and blue. So the, so now that we're talking about rares, these come in cycles. Uh, so Beast Mode, three-cost, attacks for six, five, or four, blocks for three, brute attack action. If you've intimidated this turn, this gets plus two. So this can come in for a three-card, or three-pitch eight at red. It's I. Yeah, I think the if it was two cost card but... ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like I think Reinar would actually probably might like it if it was two cost because it kind of fits the whole yellow cost curve. But yeah. like with the three cost, it's just you're asking too much from even the yeah. mid rangey value Reinar deck. Okay, so yeah, more this is like good. more castable mm-hmm. in KO, but you do less yeah. intimidating in KO, right? Exactly. So, okay. Yeah, it's it doesn't really have a home. Okay, Pat Call. Uh, this was a card that showed up in most Reinhardt lists uh, at yellow. Um, so the red here is a three cost, seven power brute attack action that defends for three. It says when this defends, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is six or more power, put it on the top. Otherwise, put it on the bottom. So this gave a little bit of consistency to brute that you could guarantee that your random draw discard would hit a six. Um, Relevant for Reinhardt much more than Leviah. And I don't think KO has any issues with uh, the Sixer uh, with having a six power card at the top. So, right. Uh, I guess uh, this. I mean, I, I don't think the. I think the devs printed the yellow. And that was perfect. I, I don't really see a reason yeah. for the blue yeah. or the red to exist. Oh, blue is one blue of the best. Yeah, blue is great in KO. KO, yeah. Because it's a six. Right. Right, yes. Right. Yes. The red, sorry, does not, does not need to exist. Yeah, red, there's just no reason but, for it. But, okay, here, here's the thing. Like, aren't there enough blue fives that he doesn't even need something that... This essentially has no text, right? It does have text. It In KO, it almost has no text. No, in KO has a lot of text. But your your top card is almost always a six. Yes, but it's it's shelter against your few power cards like Cast Bones and Blood Rush Bellow. Sure. Okay. Beca- because you're always drawing off the top and discarding with Bear Fangs, Wild Rod, Pulping, all those mm-hmm. cards. So there is a factor like that mm-hmm. is unknown. Okay. And this just says, okay, no matter what, I'm hitting, and all I need to do is yeah. block three. And okay. that's like Sure. The downside is is you are giving your opponent information. Yep. If you do not plan on discarding that card immediately, mm-hmm. you're saying, "Hey, I'm, this card will be in my hand." Kind of situation. Mm-hmm. That is something that needs to be considered. But I yep. think it's worth it in blue for, for sure. Okay, so blue pack call pretty good. Uh, the red one probably not seeing yeah. much play. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on. We got rawhide rumble. This is a two cost six power brute attack action card. Defense for three. It has Beat Chest. This is a new mechanic from Heavy Hitters. Beat Chest says, as an additional cost to play, you may discard a card with six or more power. When this attacks a hero, if you have Beaten Chest this turn, Intimidate them. So two power... Or sorry, two cost, six power attack with Beat Chest. If you've Beaten Chest, Intimidate. Um... So notably, the blue is four power, so not relevant at all. Uh, so it's basically the let, let, let's talk about the beat chest mechanic as a whole. So you have the option to discard a card, and this would intimidate in Reinhardt or give you a plus one to the next turn in KO. Uh, generally. Not that strong, but I guess it gives some flexibility to how you play. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the cool thing about Beat Chest is it stacks for the turn. So if you have one right. card with Beat Chest, um, all your Beat Chest effects kind of um, build up from one discard. Yep. 
and we'll we'll see several cards uh later that uh have beat chest on them or reference beat chest um do we do we think the whole beat chest mechanic is uh relevant in cc it can think, and it can't be okay, yeah I it depends on what you're going for specifically is interesting in reinar yeah and a mid-range game plan it gives you some flexibility and there are some cards like in Michael Fang's list, for instance, where you had the uh, the pummel list. This falls in that line with the two for six style, right? Mm-hmm. And there's some cards that it could replace that could give you like if you have tempo, you get one more extra intimidate out and then follow up with a pummel or something along those lines. Like I could see that happening. Mm-hmm. We'll just have to kind of see how that brews. But I, I don't think is this is like a a haymaker in the list, you know, like this is an instant three of this could be like one of your later cards in your deck building. Like, hey, I want a little bit of flexibility. This is like my 50 something card. Let's put these in. Okay. Also, I think it depends on if beat chess is worth actually building into and playing multiples of those effects in your deck. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a double intimidate for very cheap, though. Yep. Exactly. Absolutely. It's it's actually probably the cheapest way to get a double intimidate right. Mm-hmm. On an attack. That is so that is very notable. So, yeah, I mean just this and let's say you have a pummel and arsenal or something like that, tunic counter, and you have a barraging beatdown and any six. I mean you wreck your opponent there, right? Yeah. Well, not necessarily because you triple intimidate, you, your pummel doesn't do anything, but let's say you just have the four card hand, you do the same thing. Like that's that's pretty good, pretty good. Yep. All right, so it sounds like uh, this will be a role player card. Okay, let's move on to the common reprints. So these are cards. Since Reinhar is returning to the deathmatch arena, uh, it is natural that some of the cards for Brute are reprinted. So we have Pack Hunt. This was from WTR. Uh, classic two cost, six power attack, defense for three, one at attacks, intimidate. Excellent in Reinhardt. Not that great right. in uh, the so other decks. The previous card that we were talking about, that competes with this card slot. Yes. Well, like, kind of. Right. So that's where the deck building has to, like, kind of be balanced around. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have Bear Fangs. This is a. Uh, the, these two cards here, Bear Fangs, Wild Ride from Everfest, were really, really, really strong. Yeah. And one of the ways you could tell it's very, very, very strong is these don't defend. So Bear yeah. Fangs is a two-cost, six-power brute attack. Has no defense value. When this attacks, draw a card and then discard a random card. If the card has six or more power, this gets plus two. So a very, very consistent Two cost eight for KO. Nine. Yeah. Nine. nine. Yep. Because, because of the might. Yep. Yep. A two card, a two card nine. Uh, and then Wild Ride. Two cost uh, brute attack action that attacks for six. Has no defense value. When this attacks, draw a card, discard a card. If the card had six or more power, this gates go again. So this allows for wide turns. Excellent in. Uh, Blood Rush Relo type of turns, uh, mm-hmm. or just just this into a uh, tunic weapon is also really really strong. Uh, both of these are uh, great cards. Right. Uh, any? Yeah, these these will see play like one hundred percent in KO. Yeah, right for sure. Is and the then uh, yellow was going to play Wild Ride too? Are are the yellows a possibility in KO? Yeah, uh, yeah yellow yeah, Wild Ride. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the wild rides for sure. Bear things. Um, it might compete with some later cards, of mm-hmm. course, depending yeah, on like course. what your deck building is. But I think the wild rides. You're you're gonna, probably going to play six of those, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just because it's like sick. yeah. The the uh, yellow bear fangs is still a two card eight with the might token, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So I mean that's right. comp- that's a wounded bull, and those are that's great numbers. So so we're we're getting yeah. to a point though where you're you have like. 12 no blocks that's uh yeah yeah that's that's where i think mathematically i don't know if you really want to run more than i'm not gut says 15 would be excessive but no fear is looking 12 12 is 
Yeah, 12 is where I drew my line. I was like, I'm yeah. not running any more than 12. Yeah, sounds, sounds about right to me. All right, uh, let's talk about some new commons that Brute got. So we have four of them to talk about. Two of them are attack actions. Two of them are non-attack actions. Let's talk about the new Brute common attack actions. So we got Assault and Battery, a three-cost red, yellow, or blue Brute attack action. Attacks for seven, six, or five. Blocks for three. It says Beat Chest. So as an additional cost to play this, you may discard a card with six or more power. When this attacks, if you've beaten chest this turn, create an agility token. So a modular card, you can throw it out three for seven, or three for seven, discard a card to make an agility token. Or you can do something prior to this, and then you don't have to discard, uh, assuming that had beat chest on it. Uh, is this strong enough to see play in CC? I think it can. Because especially with KO, you are getting an agility and a might with it. So that card that you lost, right. that investment isn't awful. And a lot of times against these, uh, you know, uh, these decks that want to just block you out or, you know, they're just trying to wait for their own setup turn and you have that wild ride and you could do like a wild ride weapon play. You have that four card hand tempo. You can just play this out. Um, mm -hmm. Choose the card you want to get rid of. Keep you that power card for next turn in Arsenal. That's gonna have go again, and you have a might token as well, and you're throwing damage at them at the same time. So, I think it definitely can see a spot. I think it's solid. The fact that it's a three block is like just icing on the cake, right? Absolutely. Because like if you look at the other cards in the other classes, most of them that have these kind of effects, like these modular effects, they're two blocks. Right, mm -hmm. and not to mention, in limited specifically, you get this card in KO, and you have a raw meat. You got a two block equipment ready to go. Like that's that's really good. I know we're mainly focusing on CC, but, but I mean, there, there's a lot of flexibility with that card, yeah. and uh, just the stats on its own, like that is exactly where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Just right. The the way that I'm looking at the beat chest mechanic is like if you ever want to do like a real mid rangey kind of build, the biggest problem with like Wounded Bull Icelander was she couldn't utilize all of her cards, right? Like that was the biggest threat. If you just took your turn off, like what, what's the worst they do? Throw a Wounded Bull? Well, they still have two cards in their hand, right? So, like anytime you're on a very mid rangey game plan, that's actually your greatest fear is not utilizing every single card uh, when your opponent slips up. And these cards specifically allow you to convert those cards into value, especially mm -hmm. in Kano. Yep. Uh, so if you start seeing like very mid rangey Kanos that are like really on the slower end, I expect to see cards like this. I'm going to start calling them Kayo because we, we keep saying Kano. I keep hearing Kano. <laughs> so I'm going to say Kayo for now and I'm going to try to. Kayo. Right. Kayo. Okay, Kayo. so the card on the right is the partner card to the card on the left pound town similar shout out stats. sexy red yeah. <laughs> three cost <laughs> seven power brute attack action that defends for three also yeah. has beat chest if you've attacked uh when this attacks if you've beaten chest create a might token so this is exactly the same as assault and battery except creating a might right. token instead of an agility token and if you've been listening to nathan in the last two videos uh the might token is the uh, agility is better agility is yeah easy agility is easier. <laughs> this um, this card has one of the best names in the game for sure, sure. sure. yep but and seven. it has flavor text it has flavor yeah. text okay so it is nowhere near as good as assault and battery yep for for our audio listeners i will read the the uh, flavor text for you guys it says go. most of all Avoid eye contact. The last wise guy, we're still scraping him off the flagstone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's uh, continue to the uh, he took that guy to non attack down. action section. <laughs> and there are two. And this is the card that I was uh, referencing that you would play before you play those beat chest uh, mechanics 
or uh, attack actions. So we got Bone Breaker Bellow, one cost, red, yellow, or blue. Uh, brute action defense for three. Has beat chest. Your next brute attack this turn gets plus three, plus two, or plus one. Is that true? Yes. Okay. If you yep. beat in chest then... this turn, instead it gets plus three. Plus five, plus four. Plus five, plus four, three. three. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So uh, this is at worst come to fight. Uh, mm -hmm. You can choose to discard a card to make it come to fight plus Galad Gauntlet together, basically. <laughs> and it will turn <laughs> and on if all Ryan the. Are... Yeah. And it, you'll also get a Might token or an Intimidate as well. Yep. It's better right. Than your hero. Yep. Right. So this, it is better than the. Those, uh, and then it obviously turns on all the beat chest uh, attack action cards. So uh, yeah. this is uh, I'm unsure I'm... of how to evaluate this. This this seems like an all or nothing. You either are playing this, yeah, uh, and you're you're going pretty heavy in the beat chest, or you're saying, eh, we're just playing beat chest for the flexibility. I I don't I'm not really all in on it. Right. Um, I uh, love beat again. chest as a mechanic, but I just can't figure out right now with these cards how they lined up the exact cost curve and how you would want to build into that. But mm -hmm. I love beat chest as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. It's also yeah. a non attack again. Action. It's like a mid rangey thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So non attack actions, like we said before, have a very high bar. So, all right. Um, I guess we're kind of neutral on Bone Breaker Bellow overall. Okay, it's uh, not bad, not good. Yeah. Yep. I think that's very similar to the card on the right. <laughs> uh smash back alehorn. Zero cost, blue pitch only comes in blue pitch. Brute action, defense for two. Create an agility and a might token go again. So it blocks two. In other classes, this would be great. In brute, it's like eh. <laughs> Mainly because yeah. it's a non attack action. Agilities are good. Might is fine. Normally, it's very hard for your blues to get more than a couple value, and I think agility and might is, you know, two and a half value or so. So it's, it's not bad. It's just... Maybe even three. Yeah, it's just... Uh, but I I don't think it ever sees play, though. Yeah. Like, you're competing with these other no. blues, like mm -hmm. Kayo said it right at this time. Um, you have all these fives that you're playing, right? In Levia, you have more sixes, and then you're playing um, whatever the discard. Tear Limb for Limb, I think is what it is. Yeah, you're playing that card. You're playing, like, Convulsions from the Bells of Hell. Like, you're competing with that kind of stuff, right? And then in Reinar, you have, like, Barrages. You're just playing that plan. I don't I don't know if there's room for something like this, especially out of two block. Mm -hmm. You could replace something like Dig Up Dinner, where you just want to lean more aggressively. Um, sure. That's really the I only really spot. like Dig Up Dinner, though. Oh, I do, I really too. Like uh, I card. love it. I think that's but, great. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to lean more aggressively, you could make that sure. swap in Reinar. But that's like the only spot that I see anybody okay. doing. So, but yeah, but Reinar's know. more of a mid-range deck, right? So like, Correct. you're running two blocks where you're trying to be like more aggressive in setup turns, right? Like I know yeah, that's right. kind of a mid-range mechanic, but the mid-range mechanic that we see in this game generally are like, and block a little, attack a little until I see right. my payoff card. And you can't see this and your payoff card at the same time. And even if you do, I'm thinking of Blood Rush Bellows, right? Your agility token usually doesn't even matter that much in that case. Mm -hmm. Because you're taking a random draw off the top of the deck. Right. And how I feel about it is just like, if it's a card that's not a 6 in KO, I need that to generate like at least floor 4 value and with higher expectations than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Where it's like Blood Rush and Cast Bones where you're expecting like 6 value, 5 value from those. Yeah, yeah. think of this. So it, it's 3 value by itself. You learned out, you, Do you know what else 3 value is? I will get the stutters out, I promise. Um, just having a 3 block. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, That's a five power and not making your deck worse. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on then to the hybrid cards. So this section, 
we like to use this slide to illustrate that the left is going to be the Brute Guardian cards, the right are going to be the Brute Warrior cards. Uh, neither of these are very relevant. The uh, Flat Trackers, though, notably is very, very good and limited. Um, these might see some play in Commoner, but other than that, I don't think so. That's it. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is going to start a cycle of, I think, nine different cards. So let's talk about uh, the... Well, this is this is the one that's not a cycle. The only commonality here is that they're Majestics. Uh, but we will get to the cycle soon. So we have two Brute Hybrid Majestics. So if you've watched our Warrior or Guardian review, you will have seen every single card here in the next nine slides. Uh, but we're going to talk about them, obviously, from a Brute perspective. So... Uh, First up, we got Talk a Big Game, a zero-cost blue pitch, only comes in blue. Uh, Brute Guardian action card that blocks for three. It says choose a number. The next time you deal that much or more damage to a hero this turn, create that many might tokens. So Guardian used Evasion or Pummel to ensure that this hits. Uh, Brute can use Intimidate, basically, is the main way, or things like Pulping, maybe. Um, but I... Th I think it, we're going to come to the same conclusion, Nathan, that as uh, with the Guardian, that it's very difficult to uh, extract more than three value from this. The, the, the only application I see for this card is just... I mean, we are talking about the hybrid Majestics, right? We're talking about Talk a Big Game? Yes, we're talking about Talk a Big Game right now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, basically... The only application I see is like a double barraging into Show No Mercy and then calling like 10. Um, that theoretically will win you a game. Uh, the problem is you, you need things to align absolutely perfectly for that to happen. Um, could there be like a pitch stacking ordeal? Sure. But um, blue. yeah. Yeah. But like, it's just the problem is you got to pitch stack it with things that are not blues, right? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it just. That's very difficult to do because they don't have a one cost right. weapon and they yeah. don't have a, it's asking a one lot. cost yep. anything, basically. So, mm -hmm. right, right. Okay. Uh, next up, we got Runner Runner. This is a two cost, six power brute warrior attack action. Attacks for six, defense for three. It says when this attacks, if it has go again, create an agility token. So for Brute, the the way they normally get pseudo go again is with extra action points via sc scab skins. So the main way that this is going to have go again is agility or quicken. Uh, and quicken is not happening, basically. Uh, <laughs> so basically, if you could consistently have an agility token, you can start your turn with this and then go into... I don't know, Tunic Claw, Tunic Ball Breaker, something like that. Right. Allows you to slow the game down. Uh, cycle your agility token until you see a better hand. Um, and because it is a brute and brute attack action card, it's not a generic, so it does work and play nicely with, uh, you know, barraging beatdown, blood rush bellow, etc. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think when we were talking about the warrior. In the warrior set, we were like, "This card's good, but not like blow you away good." So, I, it's like, is is this good enough to see play, or is this kind of like? I think it's the same boat that yeah. it was in the warrior, right? It's like good, but not like crazy. It it was That's good in warrior because like we don't have six power cards in warrior, right? So it's like, okay, you need right. poppers. Now you have CNC and runner runner, right? Uh, but yeah, I think with Brute, you're spoiled for choices on your reds. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, if you, have nine to 10, have... if you have nine to 10 ways to generate an agility token, this card's pretty good. Mm -hmm. If you have yeah. anything less than that, it's mm -hmm. kind of sucks. And it, it doesn't have anything hurting it. It's a six, it's a Brute attack, it's a block three, it's a two cost, and it can get go again. So, nothing hurting it, but you have to build in a way where you help it a lot. So, right. okay. All right, let's move on. So now we're going to get to the cycles here. So the first cycle we want to talk about is the Brute Hybrid Clash cards. So this is a mechanic that we haven't... I don't think we've said the word Clash the whole 
episode. So that no. might give you some insight on how good these cards are. Uh, Clash of Might is a two-cost red pitch. Comes in three versions. Uh, six, five, four. Uh, Brute Guardian attack action card defends for three. It says when this defends, clash with the attacking hero. The winner creates a might token. Okay. So by default, yeah. Guardian is probably the best clashing deck. Uh, but uh, nope. KO. I mean, KO, KO and then Guardians and then Brute. But yep. <laughs> so basically, this doesn't see play in Levi or Reinhardt. Does this see play right. in KO? Not this one, probably. Yeah, the agility you would. Yeah, Might that one's really good. Sus, uh, but Clash of Agility could be running Leviathan too as well because she utilizes the agility probably the best. Mm-hmm. She has a lot of two cost, one cost stuff. So I, th- mm-hmm. I think the risk mm-hmm. is worth the payoff in Leviathan. Although you will lose a lot by flipping over an Art of War or mm-hmm. whatever other non-attacks you run. Yep. So the main difference between Brutes and Victor is that you cannot redo a Clash. So if you lose a Clash, you lose a Clash. Um, You guys were mentioning the card on the right, Clash of Agility. Same text and stats as the card on the left. So Clash of Agility, two cost, six power. Brute Warrior attack action card, defense for three. When it defends, Clash with the attacking hero. The winner creates an agility token. Um, Mm -hmm. Much better than Might, obviously. Uh, So... Probably uh probably played in KO and Leviah. Might see some fringe play in Renner. Is that kind of the conclusion we're at? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They're the good yellows, cards. The yellows can be played in KO as well. Um Absolutely. So if if you're trying to get more agility tokens in your deck building, this is a very and nice way to want to run it. something like runner runner, mm-hmm. right? Then uh that's that's a pretty easy way to do it. So you got your beat just cards, you got your clash of agility cards. Heck, you can put a uh, test of agility. Is that what it's called? Something. We'll we'll see it in a second. But like, mm-hmm. you need to put one of those in there if you wanted to. You're reducing your consistency just a little bit. But that's a way to hit that ten mark that Nathan was talking about. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next cycle then. So we have the brute hybrid prevention instant cards. We have two of them. Uh, the one on the right is amazing. The one on the left is not so amazing, but let's talk about the, uh, one on the left first. Battered, not broken, zero cost, red, only comes in red. Uh, Brute Guardian instant. The next time you would be dealt damage this turn, prevent two of that damage. If you do, create a Might token. And take it on the chin, Mm -hmm. exact same thing, zero cost, Brute Warrior instant. Next time you'd be dealt damage this turn, prevent two of it, create an agility token. So... The card on the left is a two block and one power, basically, uh, which is a value of three. A red three block in a deck where you already have a bunch of good reds? Not great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the card on the right, amazing in Warrior. In Warrior? Uh, questionable. Here? <laughs> in, in Brood. Yeah, I'm not I so sure. Ben- but you would just want Clash of Agility over this and take, uh, especially in KO, just take the risk of clashing. Because, like, there's a good amount of decks you're always just going to beat. It's a six, it's a three block on its base, and you're actually getting kind of like a sink below rate of a three block plus another value mm-hmm. versus these where they're just baseline three value. Mm-hmm. The, the way that I look at it is the worse your odds are at winning a clash, the better these cards are. Yeah. Because if you can win Good clashes, way. there are better places to get these tokens. Yep. Yep. Exactly. exactly. Good way to put it. Right. Okay, let's move on to, speaking of clash, we have <laughs> the Brute Hybrid Clash block cards. So there are two of them. Test of Might. Uh, a Brute Guardian block for four. It says, when this defends, clash with the attacking hero. The winner creates a Might token. Same thing on the other side. Test of agility. When this defends, clash with the attacking hero. Create an agility. The winner creates an agility. Blocks for four. Um, in general, block cards, because they could only be used in one particular way, were not the highest on. But 
in decks that can consistently win clashes. Uh, this turns the cards into a one card five, one card six, maybe for the agility, depending on it. On that, both seem uh, pretty good. Agility is good. The agility is good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Testamite probably. I wouldn't not play the seen. testamite. Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, now the the question is is like it, because your your non six power card slot is so valuable, does this replace like sink below or fate foreseen? I think it would probably have to. Like, yeah, probably you can't like run sink below card. and this and have a function. Likely deck. not because the matchups that it overlaps, you probably don't want to play it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so it, it, you're just bogging your deck down mm -hmm. and you're not going to win your classes that you need to win. So, plus, at least from KO's perspective, I think when you would want your defense reactions is to, is in the arsenal to save them for when your, you know, guardian opponent is throwing that crippling crush and you need to have a defense for it or playing against a warrior and the sink below is worth so much more than a sink below because it's, you know, not turning armor prize and it's coming from the arsenal. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just kind of hard because these are so, they're good value, but they're one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they beat, you know, the classics of fate. They're not as flexible you know. either. Sink right, below. yeah, like, exactly. that's the issue that we see. I don't think mini decks are going to be cutting like sink below or anything like that, of course. But, mm -hmm. um, paper scene that I could see test of agility taking a sure. paper scene slot uh, of some number, you might not play like all three, like one or two, something along those lines. Because that's kind of what I was looking at. I know we're talking about brute, but that's one thing I'm evaluating for Bravo, right? Mm -hmm. Over the paper scene slot, but anyway. Let's move on to the Brute Hybrid check block cards. Uh, these basically are block cards that check if you have a token. If you do, you get the, a bonus. It's a wall of meat and muscle. Uh, I, does, I think this only comes in one color. Uh, Brute Guardian block for three. Mm -hmm. When this defends, if you control a might token, you may put an attack action card from your graveyard on top of your deck. So a little bit of recursion, a little bit of guarantee that the top card is a six power card if you want. Um, but a red block three with an upside is not uh, particularly exciting. <laughs> so this card is a little interesting, right? So is there a red card, like a red attack action card in KO that we really want to put on the top of our deck? For like a follow-up turn probably not yeah but uh he is the most consistent deck at making this work right because mm -hmm. you'll make a might on your turn you draw this you can block for three you get the recursion back maybe um i don't think it's gonna see any play but it's possible it's probably like a, a d tier card or something like that right he also has the most deck building restrictions that would not allow yeah, him to include true. this. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, this would be like a really weird fringe sideboard card, maybe. I don't know. All right. The uh, the card on the right is Run Into Trouble, a red pitch Brute Warrior block card that blocks for three. When this defends, if you control an agility token, deal one damage to the attacking hero. So it's very similar to Steel Blade Shunt and Reckless Swing. Um the the only possibility I see with this is like if ward is like really rampant uh that's sometimes pinging for one is enough um yeah even then right. like <laughs> right yeah if you're playing against like a prism and you're worried about the ward like well first yeah. of all you're already like super favored right yeah. and then <laughs> secondly if they have like a ton of rune or um i almost said rune chance a ton of spectral shields like it's what like, are you doing this yeah. this is only stopping one of those right it's not like a bin set pay one life rune chant that kills everything right yeah. so mm -hmm. okay so probably not it, being seen <laughs> if it right. dealt if it dealt a damage all the time we can have a conversation 
there's no <laughs> way I'm putting a card in my deck that is conditional itself and it also has another condition on the text. Because you got to use the block card when you draw it. You either have to pinch it or yeah. block with it. You don't have any other choice. And you might not have an agility token. So, like, probably 50% of the time, this is a red do, do nothing block three. I mean, it's just it's mm-hmm. bad. Right. Yep. I, I might see this as a one of just to because people no. avoid getting into reckless swing rage. So <laughs> no, now, no. now they have to not drop Stop. to three. Uh huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Yep. Uh, if you want to never put listen. your opponent in reckless swing range, add these to your deck. Yeah, but uh, there you go. Yeah, listen, <laughs> I go down to five against. I it's all the time. Yeah. This would kill me. This would easily kill me if they have two reckless swing in a run. But no, it's it's don't play this card. Yeah. In limited, um, it's probably great to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can right. see that. Uh, let's move on to the wind up cards. So we have mighty wind up and agile wind up. These have similar stats, but their activated ability is different. So they're both three cost red, yellow, or blues that attack for seven, six, or five, defend for two. And as an instant, you can discard this, create a bite token for the mighty windup, or as in the case of agile windup, you can discard it to create an agility token. Um, agile windup's my man. Yeah, agile windup is good card. pretty good. Mighty windup, not so much. Uh, agile windup blue seems quite good <laughs> for yes. chaos. Yeah. Yes. Um the uh, best art but the best artist in the game as well. Like this art is incredible. You, you just play it for that reason. It doesn't have to have text. Yep. Yep. Cards are great. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean like it's flexible, right? It's a it's a blue six power mm-hmm. that if you have tempo on your opponent's turn, you can discard it, make agility and extend your turn. Something along those lines. Or Heck, you can do it on your turn if you want to go ahead and make a might and set up for another turn, you know. Yep. Absolutely. Kind of do whatever you need. Uh, uh, is the yellow playable, though? That is my question in, like, Rhinar. Probably not. It could be. Maybe. If, you're, if yeah. it's a very aggressive list, sure. But if not, no. Right. In Levi, like, none of these cards really. Like, so KO's the only one that actually gets decent value from triggering the discard. He gets the right. might along right. with whatever it produces. Everybody else, it's ju- it, like agile wind up in Reinar is captain's call. Well, at it, it also can any time intimidate, right? It, it intimidates on your turn if you make it right. It, it's like on demand, but you won't have the so. agility right. for that turn. So, so it's Correct. a little bit of Correct. conflicting uh, design right. there. <clears throat> okay. May, ooh, hold on. Mm-hmm. Thought. Let's say it's on their turn. And you need to get a last card out of their hand, kind of like a uh, scowling flesh flag. You can discard work. this, and it doesn't work. Okay. Rhino is on your turn. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, shows how much I know about Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, very, very strong if you could intimidate. That'd be so that. good. Yeah, that that, that, is, that is partly why scowling flesh flag is so good because it's a right. very good effect. It's just like Ice Lander being able to give you a frostbite token on your turn, right? Um, if okay. that worked, you'd play all twelve. <laughs> if that were all to him, bro. Well, no, you'd only be able to play the the six for sure. Yeah. Or wait, oh, you're saying these cards? Yes, all yes, of them. All bro, of them. Like, yeah, all of that'd them. be insane. Sure. All right, let's uh, move on to the rising cards. So the brute hybrid rising cards. Uh, rising power two cost six five or four. Brute guardian attack action card defense for two. Says if you've drawn a card this turn, this gets plus one. Yeah. Mm, the only way you're drawing cards is on a Blood Rush Bellow turn, generally. Uh, you draw all the time. Have a level like draw on this card. Yeah, yeah, you do, but yeah, you draw I mean, this like, card quite a bit. Uh, but a, a two cost seven conditional that blocks for two is just not good enough, right? Right. I will admit that. I think Rising Power will see play. 
specifically in KO? Because we talked about how many times um, you can do a two for six or whatever and then tunic ball breaker, right? Oh, no. They don't have access. It gets plus one. I thought it was the minus one resource one. That would be nuts because then you could fit the curve correct. when you That's don't correct. have tunic. Yeah. You throw right. it yep. in there. Yep. But that, right. oh, they don't have the best one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this this one won't really see. Never yeah. mind. These don't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Reading the card to cleanse the card. All right. So, That's right. rising power, not that great. Uh, rising speed. This is a two cost five, four, or three brute warrior attack action card. Tax, uh, defense for two. If you've drawn a card this turn, this gets go again. I mean, out of the two, I'm more inclined to... If I had to put one in my deck, I would put that one in. But... yeah, If I had to pick one, Rising Speed is decent in Kaio. Yeah. Like... Uh, but it would I'm just not, be... I, I'm either not playing these or not playing Flesh and Blood. In my opinion, like, you'd rather just attack with a weapon. If you have two floaters. Right. Yeah, no, sure, absolutely. The only way I could see this playable is if you were trying to set up like a three chain link wide turn. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that included Which... like this in Arsenal and then you have a wild ride or something crazy. But like that's asking too much too. It's a two block. Yeah. Like it, 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 yeah, you just can't really do it. But between these two, I like rising speed. Sure. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Moving on to the wage cards. So that's a. Another mechanic that we haven't mentioned much. Uh, the Brute Hybrid Wage cards. We got Wage Might. Three cost. Seven power. Brute Guardian. Attack action card. Defense for two. When this attacks a hero, you may wager a Might token with them. Uh, I don't think that's a without, cheap. Without oh. evasion and without combat tricks, this is a... Yeah, Brute just doesn't have, like... You have Pummel, but Pummel doesn't fit these cards like at all. No, so, no. Um, the cost sure, well. you, you could have a Might token and take it to eight and make it even more inconvenient to block. But like, if they block it... Yeah. Without Vigor tokens, right? it's... Um, yeah, these the, the cost curves are kind of weird. It's like, when are you playing this over like any color barraging beatdown? <laughs> you know? I, I will say, don't sleep on Wage Agility. And this is my thought process, right? So Wage Might, let's say you found a way to pump it to 10. They could theoretically block 10 with three cards and then like swing weapon, right? And take advantage of that Might token with the plus one. Wage Agility, you can't do that because the cards that you're getting out of their hand is the turn that the Agility token will pop. So is I think that if you can get Wage Agility to 8 to 10... It basically has zero risk associated with it, unless your opponent has like a bunch of armor, because or they're just they're not going to do a wield warrior. Correct. Yeah. If they have two weapons, they can always do it. But um, yeah, like if you make wage agility tall enough, I think your opponent just can't utilize the agility, so therefore there's no risk. Basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, I like that. Of note, this is something we forgot to mention in the warrior set review. Uh, this is the follow-up art to Agile Windup. So the the you threw a spear yeah. at this I mean, giant poking beast, and now, and it's, now mad. it's mad. <laughs> we said we nice. would point that out. We forgot to point that out in the Warrior Set review. All right. Uh, okay. So let's move on. I still don't think it's playable, but yeah, it's sure. it's you you have to combine it, and it at three cost. Like, what can you combine it with effectively? Is the the problem? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the lead with cards. One of these cards is not like the other. Speed. <laughs> lead with powers, the one <laughs> on the left. Speed. It's a one cost brute guardian action. Comes in red, yellow, blue. Defense for two. It says your next brute or guardian attack this turn gets plus three. Create a might token. So you basically can at red convert this into a one cost four so one card and one resource for four value which is mm. very very normal yeah uh, unless you're dying 
to have a might token for some reason like i don't see why you would play this um okay. the other card though lead with speed this one uh this one's pretty good this one is a one cost brute warrior action defense or two it says your next brute warrior attack the strength gets plus three plus two or plus one create an agility token go again so they should have just made this a warrior card i'm <laughs> completely joking but for cc purposes like mm -hmm. this card is great in warrior again non-attacks make your deck inconsistent right yep. great card it's just yep. uh how are you how are you making that happen blood rush set the bar too high for uh non-attacks <laughs> and cast bones like yeah you right built it yeah. <laughs> went right up there with it and said all right yep yeah this yeah. is what we expect mm -hmm. So you, you guys don't think that this is uh, good enough to see play in Brute? No. I have it in my well, K list. It's like a you one do? to two of. One oh, to one two to two of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, how many how many non six do you have in your K list? You're saying a lot of these cards. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Uh, well, Cast I'll... bones, blood rush, and this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. And uh like I don't know. It's just if come to fight and Captain Skull had a baby, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's true. Fun. Sure. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I would put this in my prototype list, but you know, so I'm happy the, to be wrong. So the, the main the main design difference is that Brute has their on hit is damage, and the on hit of Warrior is very very it varies, right? So giving plus yeah. three to a Warrior attack really ups the ante it really says okay we're we're i'm serious now about this and so mm. it's uh having a buff plus an agility token is much 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 more relevant for warrior um whereas is brutus just like okay cool your stop is coming in for extra damage okay you already have a good enough amount of we lost a man we lost <laughs> him but he's back he's back um yeah we already have enough ways to like make agilities for the most part, yeah. right? With the clashes and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. Nathan, you might have done the math a little bit better than I have, but um if you need more agility creators, like unconditional, this is a very solid choice. Mm -hmm. I'll give it that. Sure. What sets it apart is it's making what you want with zero risk. There's no wager, Correct. there's no yeah. clash, you're getting it, it's yours. Done. Right. That's, That's what why I'm you saying. run this card. That's the only reason you run mm -hmm. this card. And if you're off tunic turn and you have a two cost whatever attack, then you're just making it a generally a into nine. pair things is just yeah. dumb good. Off of a blue, holy cow. Pretty good. All right. Bear things requires a discard, right? I'm yeah, but you draw. Correctly. Mm -hmm. You draw. Yeah. Oh, you, you do. Draw yeah. 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 Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this final card here um this one much much more relevant to the guardians and warriors uh i guess mm -hmm. we're going to talk about this card in the context of keeping brutes in check uh because balance of justice is a generic head equipment blocks for two has guard well when the combat chain closes if this defended put minus one counters on it equal to its defense so it'll block for two and then it you can continually block but it will block for zero uh, has instant destroy this draw card. Activate this ability only if an opponent has drawn two or more cards this turn. Well, for one, one of the decks, for several decks in the game, they are consistently drawing two cards. Uh, the ones that we have mentioned in the other set reviews are things like Blood Rush Bellow, things like Tome of the Imperial Flame, Tome of Fendel, uh, Mask of Momentum plus Wyoming Gustway, Mask of Momentum plus Ancestor Empowerment. Uh, Crown of Providence plus Sink Below, Double Sink Below, uh, Three of a Kind, uh, Sink Below plus Crown of Seeds. Uh, is there any major ones? That Art, I'm of War. Art of War. Art of War. Steel Blade Supremacy hitting twice. You already said Tome of Imperial Flame? Tome of, I did say Tome of Imperial Flame. Tome okay. of Fendel. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and Cashed in as well. You know, and with Cashin, all these new yeah, old yeah, bills. Yeah. 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 So there, there's quite a there's quite a few uh, ways in the game to draw two cards, uh, but brute is one of those that I would say very consistently does that at least once a game. Yeah, uh, if you're if you're not playing Blood Rush Bellow at least once per game, you're probably losing anyways. 
Um, and you have to play this. So I guess the real question is, is like, let, let's first talk about this in Brute. Uh, if Brute becomes enough of a metagame, would this see play over scowling? It, let's say Brute becomes like so. 25, no. 30% of the meta. Scowling is uh, like probably one of the best pieces of equipment in the game at this point. Like it can it just be there. a carrying husk. 2.0. If you're playing Labaya, you got two of them. Like how insane yeah, really. is that? Mm -hmm. It's so good. Because right. like instead of drawing a card, which is worth, you know, on it, like especially in Brute, like three, um, you're like with Scowling, you're taking the card away on their Blood Rush or their Art of War turn, which is like worth five to six, you know, on average. If it's like a, a five, zero for three, plus one with Art of War, that's uh, a six block, like you're saying, or on a Blood Rush Bellow turn, if that's a blue, you're saving uh, five life. So okay. it, it's yeah. way more than. I see more lines as Brute where you want to try to prevent more damage to keep your hand as opposed to block some, draw another card, get something random. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So, mm -hmm. and the scaling like works in every single matchup. doesn't matter what it is. Like even against decks like guardian where they don't really go again that much. Like they do, they have like E-Strike nowadays and stuff like that. But even then, let's say they attack you with some big dumb attack and they have tunic, and one floating or two floating, and they have a card in hand. Well, guess what? You're not pummeling me this turn. See you later, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, in the context of playing this in brute, probably not. Uh, is there a way that brutes can play around this card, or is this LSS's way of just saying, "Hey, this is their a, balance of this is, this is their yep. check yep. check and balance." <laughs> In the, there you go. Yeah. Normally Dad they wins. wait a set to print the hate, but this time they're just like, no, we're just gonna. <laughs> just in go. case. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's not not too much uh, counterplay there for brute. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to our final slide here. So now that we've talked about all the cards for brute in heavy hitters, let's talk about where we see these three heroes going, what type of builds we think are going to be pro prominent, and, you know, whether or not we think they're going to be meta contenders, and, you know, maybe talk about where their good and bad matchups are. Uh, let's start with Reinhar, and we'll work our way to the right. Um, so, Traditionally, it has been a long time since Reinhardt has been meta-viable or meta-relevant. Uh, these new cards give him some upgrades, but he, his design seems antithetical to the, uh, the the concept of Brute, where it's like, if you have bigger numbers, then you can outrace most of the decks. But if you're racing decks, then you essentially don't have a hero text on your card so uh, there's a lot of design mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. with reinhar that i that aren't easily fixed <laughs> yeah and and here's my big question with reinhar it's like if you can build ko now because i'm beginning to see this where like you know victor decks who are trying to block me and their whole strategy is you know trying to fatigue me out go for the value if your ko deck is actually able to just outvalue them and, you know, set up enough big turns without even really pitch stacking and go over the top, then why do you even need Intimidate? Okay. What What is the the trade-off? If you can beat the Fatigue decks, because that's the whole point of Intimidate, that it gets over the decks that want to block. But if KO can do that on his own and he can race the aggro decks more efficiently, why, why go with Reinar? That's my... Uh, that's my question. If why where where I see Reinar is why would you play him good. over? Oh no, for sure, for sure. Because, I mean, and all the are like pretty decent now, and I think the mid range plan of Reinar is not terrible. Uh, once Icelander got out of the meta, he lost a lot of stock. Right, that was the big thing. But yeah, I mean, you're correct. I don't think he has anything compared to these other brutes. The fact that we have these other two just says a lot. So, but I do like his playstyle more. It's almost uh, 
I don't know. I just like the old Welcome to Wraith guys, but that's not the point. The point is, is he meta relevant? And uh, likely we're not going to see a lot of them. So, Unless we just have some like one tricks that are like, oh, I, I love this deck. This is my guy, right? I've played him since the start. So. so I've been, you know, as you guys have been talking, I'm trying to think like, what does Brute do that's unique to Brute? And one of the things that they do pretty much exclusively for their class, they have item destruction. They have uh, yeah. arc smash. They have smashing performance. Um, I don't know if that will be relevant, but if dash rears its head uh okay. tree frog dash um one of the best heroes to meet tree frog dash in combat is going to be reinhar um so mm -hmm. he has a very very niche <laughs> position he's good there yep he is okay there. uh let's talk about levia so at the very beginning of the uh video i talked about the uh how levia has you know half flash in the pan during dust till dawn uh, we have the recursion version of Leviah. We have the aggressive version of Leviah. And we said that uh, she doesn't do the aggressive thing as well as KO. She doesn't do the controlling thing as well as Rydar. And, you know, you, you could just kill yourself by blood debt, right? So where do we see Leviah kind of fitting in this metagame? Or do we not really see her fitting anywhere? Well, I mean, her power spikes are off the charts compared to both heroes, Rynar and KO. So... That's kind of like, um, you know, it, it's the armor's good. There's a little bit more risk involved with Leviya, but Leviya has always been one of those heroes that if you can mitigate the risk well and you have, and you're a good player and you can, you know, make sure that you're being, um, you arsenal the ways, you know, trying to always keep away an arsenal that makes sure that you, uh, you don't die to your own blood debt. Um, especially with the demi hero, I mean, she has crazy power spikes and great turns, so she could. I think she's she could tackle the meta in a different way. I think it might be kind of like what you've been saying, Josh, where you're like, you know, um, date your hero, marry your class. It's a. Uh, I think if you're a, rhino, uh, a brute specialist and a certain meta is, you know, you want to tackle it in a certain way. And you're pretty good with all three brutes. I feel like that's a great arsenal to have of um of weapons to attack the meta. Mm -hmm. That I I've never heard that phrase before, but I do like that a lot. So date your hero, marry your marry class. your class. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's that, good. That 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 is pretty good. Uh, Interesting thing about Leviathan, though, I don't think she gets a lot of good upgrades here. Um, yeah, I, was I about think to ask she has question. like one or two cards, maybe something along those lines that she gets that replaces some of her deck because you have this fine balance. Nathan and I talked about this um, previously where it's like you have your blood debt balance, you have your non-attack action balance, you have all of these that you're balancing already and all of these cards are not blood debt or, you know, hyper efficient like the blood debt cards are, right? So you're really having to like pick and choose like what you're trying to replace. So if you were in the past running something like Savage Feast or Pulping or something along those lines, then maybe you swap those out for something like the Clash of Agility. Right. But yeah. uh, other than that, I, I can't really see anything that I would inherently want to change. Well, she was I, already a great deck. So like, right. I mean, like one or two cards is enough. I, th I think she'll be a right. top deck in the meta. Easily top six. Interesting. Uh, can you ex explain a little bit more about that? She combats everybody on every axis. If you want to sit back and block, she has the spikes to beat you. If you want to race, she has the biggest fridge in the game, along with good damage output. Pretty good combination to have. Um, she has... Like, the tools that she got with this set fixed the only problem she had, which was killing herself, right? The way that Leviah kills herself is she doesn't have multiple action points to kill her opponent. And then she ends up killing herself, right? Well, if you have agility tokens, be a clash of agility, whatever the case may be, you don't have to run scabbies no more, which means your gam gambler gloves last longer. 
uh, before they break, which means you're safer for longer and you get to take more risk and win games sooner. Um, I think that she just has like everything that you need. Simple as that. Hmm. I'm looking into her as well, mm-hmm. for sure. I think she's uh, she's super solid. I th- I thought she was better than Kayo, but it seems that you think or you. I think guys they're think neck and neck. I think they're neck re- and neck. See, that's interesting to me. But I know Kayo's new. We haven't seen like a fleshed out list. Like, mm-hmm. hey, this is it solved, right? So, um, but Leviathan is solved. That's that's kind of why I'm like, okay, you know, one of the next events, if I'm not going to play Guardian, then Leviathan is probably where I'm going to lean. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's wrap things up and talk about KO, Armed and Dangerous. Um, where do we see KO going and how is he going to slot into the metagame? Um, this is something that we actually haven't really talked about is I, I think if we had to frame the metagame, it would be Bravo, Phi, Dash, Dromai as kind of the top four decks. In the last format? Yeah. Does that oh, carry yeah. over? Bravo, Dash, Dash for sure was no. probably the best deck. Um, I, Yeah, I, I think everything kind of like swaps around a little bit. Yeah, every everything definitely changes, but uh, how how do you see chaos slotting into the meta in general? Or let, let's just talk about the meta in general. How how do you think the meta is going to change, and how does chaos uh, work into that? It, it's kind of hard to say because these decks are coming out at the power levels where they need to be to compete with mm-hmm. everything else in the game. So I don't think it necessarily will be a shift of uh you know, who's the big dog or things like that, unless there's really just a truly great build that's kind of hidden that, you know, once we get our hands on the set, we can play around with more that we'll figure out. But right now it just seems like, you know, LSS is releasing good heroes that are tuned for CC, ready to come out, um, be heavy hitters. (laughs) And, um, yeah. But uh, (laughs) come out, be meta players, and you know, necessarily not ruin the format but just you know shake things up and add more decks in the in the pool and more options and different ways to tackle the meta i think dash probably drops a peg or two just because of all oh, these groups, they all get to play like hard smash and stuff like that so For like, free. if dash was the best deck previously which it very well could have been then um with with three brutes now right like that's just more bad matchups that you're gonna see is dash um Guardian has always had like a a pretty mediocre matchup into both gar or uh, both brutes. Now we got a third one. I need to play test it more, but I imagine it's also probably like super spiky. You just get blown out every once in a while too. Um, I think everything will adjust maybe like one tier, so on and so forth, or maybe like stay roughly the same as you add these heroes. So I'm sure we'll do a tier list pretty soon, right? Let's plug that. <laughs> I think the yeah. biggest thing is how much warrior impacts the meta, and does it force? Is the warrior interaction with the other decks to the point where you have to put in yeah. defense reactions? Because if that's uh, uh, you know, something that you have to do to beat warrior is put in defense reactions, then stuff like Levi and Ko goes down because those are inconsistent cards in those decks, and that's where Reinar stock would go extremely up. And that goes for every hero. Um, you know, it's like, True. then it goes to the point, how well can you play defense reactions? And I feel like that is actually going to be like the biggest thing in the meta where it's like, you know, your warrior matchup. Cause I feel like they finally have got enough support where I think it's going to come to the point where everyone's going to have to respect warrior in some capacity. I will, I will say that Reinhardt was traditionally one of the worst matchups for, for Dory, mainly because you could build your deck with, Sink, Fate, Reckless Swig, Springboard, Somersault, Romping Club, and still have a functional deck. And you know, when when your deck blocks for all threes and fours, like it's it's very, very solid. Um but, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, okay. Uh I guess that kind of wraps up this uh this episode here. Uh before we go though, we do want to shout out our sponsors. So we have 
several. We have Fabrec, which I'm definitely going to be visiting. Uh, Fabrec.gg, this will allow you to see how decks are being built. So what percentage of Dorinthias are rocking Domblade versus Hatchets versus Great Axe? That's <laughs> useful knowledge. Uh, yeah. We also have Magnolia Gaming as a sponsor as well. There's an affiliate link down below. So if you want some cards, go check out that link. Buy something from there. They're at every event as well. Yeah. yeah. So so go go say hi to Spencer as well. And um, Dragon Shield as well. And Card Culture. So we just want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, additionally, we also have a Patreon. So if you want to got, buy one of us a beer or a, a drink or whatever, a coffee, uh, you could do so in the description down below. Uh, all right. We have done three of these now, and uh, we have talked a lot. So I think it is it is time to... Uh, lots of theoreticals, but uh, I think there's a good amount of time before RTN season kicks in. About three weeks or so. So the next three weeks we're going to be testing the whole team is going to be streaming uh there's going to be deck text and lots of uh, great content on the channel that is going to be coming out so keep an eye out for those uh is there anything else uh you guys want to say or shout out or or talk about before we wrap things up the cg player affiliate link ah yes <laughs> if you can't find the cards that you want at the magnolia link we also have a tcg player affiliate link down below all right this has been Josh Lau, Ed Knight, Nathan Crawford, and Sebastiano Covallo with the card, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. See you later. Take care, buddy. See you.